Yeah. Hi. Hello. Uh, and this is Nick Capizzoli. Hi. Yes, I got it right. Uh, and he's one of the organ competitors in the film. Um, and let's, I mean, I guess we might as well just start with how, you know, to describe the film, it's, it's like the Olympics of the organ playing world <laughs> yes. that happens here in Montreal, the I.O. C.I.O.C., the so the CIO. Canadian International Organ Competition. Mm -hmm. Happens every three years in our city and yeah. no one knows about it. <laughs> so that's shocking. Uh, it's a huge competition. It takes place over two weeks. Very prestigious. Very Worldwide. Prestigious. They had competitors, I think, from 12 countries this year uh, that came from all over, from China, from Germany, from Korea. Um, um, so yeah, it's a huge, huge deal. And it's also, which is cool about it, is for young people. So no one really thinks of the organ and thinks of someone that looks like this, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, like... <laughs> that was, you know, the first impression that I got is that this is, um, these are five competitors that you follow. And the, you know, they're all young millennials. Um, one might even say uh, verging on hipsters. Um, and all from the four corners of the world. So uh, if memory serves, you have Texas, Pittsburgh, you're from Pittsburgh, right? So Texas, Pittsburgh, New Zealand, um, uh, where else? Um, uh, Beijing yep. and uh, Germany. And Germany, course. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and but you're saying that there's people literally from even farther regions, farther than afield, that. yes. And uh, it's young uh, because uh, I, you know I think people see organ playing maybe as uh, a little bit. I, I I was saying that it's almost you know, impenetrable to me. And funny enough, it was through your composition, which is John Cage, that was my way in uh, yeah, in this great. movie to, to, to organ playing. So um, what was it like for you to participate in this film? I mean, well, first of all, this was the first time I did an international competition. So not just doing this competition, but then being in a film for the first <laughs> time was, um, was pretty scary. Uh, but it was great, I think, because I, uh, I got to practice being on camera because we had to be on camera for all of the competition. So everybody was watching you. It was live streamed. Uh, on the internet, the whole oh, competition. Mm -hmm. okay. So having Stacy follow me for like the year leading up to the competition was kind of a good practice. It was a full year of following each. It was about eight yeah. months, I think. Yeah. 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 And you divided that between the five? Or? Uh, well, we spent more time with that because there were two of them that were in Montreal studying at McGill. Mm -hmm. So even before I got the money to really go into production, we'd already been filming with them a lot earlier in Montreal because it was easier and mm -hmm. cheaper. Uh, and then the other ones we started filming in June. Um, and really did a very intensive uh, bunch of shooting with the rest of them too. Well, you went to all those countries. Uh, multiple times. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. I think you were telling me that you went to Australia and New Zealand for a day each. Well, we had the travel time, and yeah. then I think we had one day to recover when we... <laughs> but yeah, it was like, I think, a seven-day trip, and we did New Zealand and, um, and uh, Australia. See, those are beautiful places. I, I wish for you one day to go back there and experience We had a, a day off in Melbourne. <laughs> I was very <laughs> happy good. about that. And you yourself are not necessarily an organ aficionado. Not at all. I'm like, I have zero background in music. I don't play an instrument. I know very little. I, well, I knew very little. Now I'm much better. Um, but I, I kind of think that was good because I made the film for people like me, right? That um, might not know that much about music, might not be like, you know, very into the organ. Uh, and just for them to be able to discover it the way I did and the way it excited me. So uh, hopefully I'll pass that on to other people. And so what was it like for you to also you know, be, you know, have this very vulnerable experience be put on film. So, you know, you're, you're backstage preparing for, you know, probably the biggest moment of your life and we don't see it on camera, but there is a whole crew who are there following you. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That was definitely uh, something to get used to. But they had followed me uh, to different recitals and, and other pressure situations. Mm -hmm. So that by going to the, getting to the, to the rounds, it was like, oh, this is nice to have a little family or support group here. Yeah. Uh, so Not everyone felt the same way. As well. <laughs> Are you the nice guy? Yeah. He's the nice guy. <laughs> because everybody seemed to have a different personality, right? Yeah. And, and everyone yeah. is very quirky. Um, you know, I loved uh, the fact that um, the Texas guy is going, uh, you know, it, it, you're juxtaposing him at the shooting range with... Uh, uh, me doing mini golf, yeah. You yeah. playing yeah. mini golf yeah. and, and um, you, you what, what's her name? Uh, the, the, the Beijing... Uh, Yiwan. Yiwan uh, doing Tai Chi. Yeah. So, I mean, you're really showing everyone's preparatory 
yeah. uh, uh, elements. And then I'm also thinking there's there's a Rocky scene. As, as you guys know, I'm a huge Rocky fan. And you did a training montage a la Rocky. Yeah, I'm a huge Rocky fan too. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where there's even, they're chasing a chicken. I mean, you, you, you yeah. really went for it. Then. Yeah, but the guy had chickens. Like that was totally <laughs> like reality. It wasn't a set up thing. It was like he literally had chickens and he was chasing them. So <laughs> I don't think he even knew about the Rocky stuff. And actually I didn't even know about it at the time. It was my husband after who reminded me, I'd mm. forgotten. And he was like, you know, they chase chickens in Rocky. And I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So how did you, because, you know, you got funding to make this movie, mm -hmm. right? But how does one, the elevator pitch for a movie about an organ competition can't be an easy sell. Well, my last film was about shoe shiners. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that was actually harder. Uh, the good thing about this is it was a competition film. So mm -hmm. people know what a competition film is and they're like, they know that audiences like competition films. So it was actually a lot easier for me to sell mm -hmm. than the shoe shiner film. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it helped because the shoe shiner film was shot internationally as well. And it was with many characters woven together. So they knew I could tell that kind of story. Um, so broad the broadcasters actually hopped on board pretty quickly. Oh, that's great. Uh, it helped also because there was a deadline. So, um, oh, right, because the competition, the competition happens. competition happens in October, mm -hmm. and I'm like, if you don't give me money, like, it's going to be another three years until I'm going to be able to do this, so, you know, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the elevator pitch is good. It's spellbound with good music. That's great. Yeah. Oh, okay. I really like that. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it's a bit of a dig at Spellbound. Uh, well, they had no music. Oh, they so. had no music. Okay, that's right. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, sorry. I was thinking of I was thinking of um, something else. Spellbound is the spelling bee. Yeah. Okay. Are there other competition films or documentaries mm -hmm. that uh, that you cite as big influences? I liked First Position. About, mm -hmm. I don't know, was it First Position? First Position is a ballet one, which was good. But the really, really good one was The Little Golfers. Did you see that? No. Oh gosh, what's it called? And I even spoke to the director because I liked him so much. Um, the Short Game, the which short is a great game. title too, because they're little tiny golfers. Um, so not mini putt. We're talking actual golfers, no, like, but like, like little people yeah, who are golfers. No, not little people, like okay. children. <laughs> okay, sorry. <Yeah. laughs> so they're children golfers, and he follows them around, uh, and it's great. It's a competition, and it's super exciting, and it's beautifully edited. And so that was something that I was watching and had my editor watch, and was really into. So. Well, I, I have to say that the, yeah, the, the cinematography, the editing, um, the close on people's faces uh, you know as I I was doing a review on the radio and I talked about how you know there's joy there's tension there's fear you know a lot of people talk about the fear of of the, the not just the competition and fear of your own ability but fear of the others coming in and, and you know did, did you feel did, did you strike up friendships through this or? I did I cer certainly I met some very wonderful people I think there's still a lot of camaraderie in the competition even though there's high stakes mm -hmm. um, but everyone's in the same boat we all want it but we're still supporting each other along the way yeah. of course it's it's really scary when you're about to go on and then you hear the person right before you and mm -hmm. and, and, and of course they're all doing well um, so it was a really tough decision I think for the jury but what's cool is that none of you are dickheads right you know no. everyone everyone no. seems nice and and from a storytelling perspective that's got to be a bit harder because what the the competition movie that came to mind when I was watching this mm -hmm. one of my I think one of the greatest movies ever made um, I don't know if you've seen this but it's called um the king of kong a fistful of quarters and oh it's, no i haven't seen oh, it so this is <laughs> about uh donkey kong com uh, competitors mm -hmm. uh, like arcade donkey kong competitors <laughs> and one of them is just the biggest dick in the world and he's not necessarily a cheater but he's he, you know he plays mind games and he's he, he is presented on film as just being a total jerk mm -hmm. and so that makes it so compelling to watch um, and so, you know, not having uh, the foil, mm -hmm. was that was that a challenge for you? I actually don't like that kind of thing. Like, I, <laughs> I'm just not that kind of person that <laughs> wants a villain, right? I don't think you need a villain. I think, like, the point of it was for me to make everyone fall in love with each of them. Mm -hmm. Like, that was what I wanted, and not to have anyone look bad. And, and also just to show their talents and their where they were coming from and what motivated them. And I think that's interesting enough than 
without having to have a villain necessarily. Because right. um, like I think people really do end up caring about each of the characters, and we've screened it in quite a few places now, and different people have different favorites. Mm -hmm. like, really? I always ask people, yeah, it's not. The I can't same. ask you who your favorite is. <laughs> well, I right? don't have a favorite. Right. But no, no, different people have like different like they root for different people in the film, and and uh, I think that's kind of fun. Like the, I did my job. I think you know that was what I wanted to do was. Well, yeah, I guess if you think about it, there's, you know, my impression of you based on the film is um, you're, you're extremely, you're meticulous, um, that, that, you know, you, you're, uh, I guess your mentor, teacher is, you know, he says he's never had anyone like you because you can literally do anything, you know, technically that he gives you, you can do anything. Um, and yet you chose John Cage, which is not, uh, you know. It's not very virtuosic, no. No, exactly. It's, it's, and then you have um, the Beijing girl whose dad was the, you know, is, is the, the Chinese, uh, you know, the, the, the most well-regarded Chinese yeah. uh, organ player. But then there's like the, the German wonderkind and yeah. uh, or wonderkin, I guess. Uh, wonderkin. If, wonderkin. If um, and then I, I'm trying to figure out the personality. Uh, uh, yeah, then there's the gun shooting, uh, uh, <laughs> jazz playing Texan. And then... Um, the the New Zealand guy. I, I'm trying to figure out what how I would, you know, if I were to put him into, if I were to box him in, mm. is he the rule? No, he's not really the rule breaker. He's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> but so are you. You're, 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 I guess everybody. In, he's in a the, really good kid. Yeah. Um, he was, I think, the, like kind of the front runner. I mean, he was definitely people expected, you know, him and Nalsi to mm -hmm. sort of go at it. Mm -hmm. They were both had been competing against each other before and. They were kind of both the veterans, like they'd had a lot of competitions yeah. under their belt and had been up against each other, you know, before. So, but he wasn't mean to all see. I, no, I, no. I think, he, uh, <laughs> I think he wanted to win real bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, well you, everybody does. Right? You can see uh, the two who were not chosen in the top three at the end. Um, uh, you know, you, you can see they're, they're clapping, but there's, there's... It's so sad. Yeah. Like, the, the actual expression on, especially Yuan's face, you'll, you should look at yeah. it today. It's I mean, just that happens to all of us. I mean, yeah. I was in the same boat once or twice, so yeah. you know, it happens. And so are you going to do the competition again in, is it in two years? In now? 2020? 2020. Yeah. Um, oh, 2020, okay. Yeah, probably, probably not. I have other projects that I, I think I want to do, but I think this gave me like a lot of confidence to go forward with, uh, with other uh, performance uh, and competing. Things. Are you the one with the socks? Yes. Was it, yeah, I love that scene. So there's a scene in the movie where, what, what, what are on the socks again? Uh, it's like a starry night, I think they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Van Gogh, yeah. And, and I, I think that just typified for me what I think this movie represents is that it's not just black socks and staid and, and static, that there is, there's a sense of showmanship. Yeah, um, yeah I think that's important because people are watching you as you perform. Yeah, exactly. You call it your snazzy socks. Yeah, my snazzy I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the competition like for you? Like once, you know, I, I forget who it is who says, um, I just want to fast forward through the next hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, no, I mean, I didn't say that, but that's definitely, like, I resonate with that. I mean, because so much tension leading up to the moment, and you have so so many thoughts running through your mind of what could happen. Mm -hmm. And then when you're actually in the situation and doing it, it's like you're in a dream. Like, any, think of any high-pressure situation you're ever in, you just execute, and then suddenly it's over, and you're like, oh, wait, did I really do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's when you're... And someone said it was like a dream. You said it's like a dream, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah, that you're is, not yeah. even, it, it's even beyond muscle memory. It's just kind of, you're floating. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because so long you've been leading yourself up to this kind of event and then it's there. And, um, and then all the anxieties go away once you're, in, once you're in it. But it's leading up to it. I think that's just torture, especially the final round when all the stakes are high. Mm -hmm. the, earlier that day, I just didn't want to be around anybody. I was just... And yet you Super. have a camera crew. Except we're well, there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, but I wanted to ask you guys, since this is a, 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 um, a show about movies and we're talking about movies, you know, uh, putting uh, pipe dreams aside, what are some of your favorite movies? Oh, and, and I'll ask you the same thing, oh, so man. start thinking. Uh, okay, <laughs> you're lucky I'm going for it. Um, I actually love The Ten Commandments. Really? It's not a movie Charlton person's Heston. movie, but yeah. I just love it. It's so cheesy. It's so fabulous. The costumes are great. Uh, Did you ever want to make a movie like that? No, never, no. But it's fabulous. I mean, how could you? you there's only one Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> uh, I like Dangerous Liaisons. I like True Romance. Uh, my favorite. I love absolutely, that film. the absolutely. music too is great. Yeah. And oh, everything, so all the violence against women, will, you know, not great. Yeah, but, but her <laughs> violence back to Gandolfini is just so great. Yeah, no, it's that's one of my faves for sure. Yeah, 
uh, and yourself? So surprisingly, I like scary movies. I, I like oh. the thrills of scary movies. I can see so, that in, yeah, I mean, John yeah. Cage, Organ. Yeah. Uh, I really like Stephen King movies there, uh, and the books too, because they're so psychological. Like It, I thought was just incredible. Yeah. I'm really excited for the second one coming out next week. I'm going to see it, uh, I'm, I'm going to see it. Well, if, if this is being broadcast after, then I'm really excited that I got to see it. But um, yeah. I remember seeing the first It, and my son was uh, maybe about two or three, and and uh, I brought him to school the day after, and he was and it was raining, and he was wearing a yellow raincoat, and he happened to point to one of those uh, sewer sewers, things, yeah. and he says, "Papa, what's that?" I was like, "Get inside now!" <laughs> Not inside the thing, but yeah. yeah Although no. it's funny now with graphics and everything, that looks lame compared to what they can do now with all the effects. Right. right. Oh, you're talking about the the first it or the, the first it looks. I think just from being a millennial and liking all yeah. the the effects, I think mean, compared to the remake they did. Oh yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I loved the remake. I yeah, think. of course. Yeah. yeah. Me too. And I'm very excited for so so scary movies. Um, one I'll recommend to you if you haven't seen it is Midsummer. Uh, I just saw that. Yeah, uh, I saw that this summer. It was did, crazy. Did it not stay with you? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really memorable. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Uh, thank you guys. This was cool. I love the fact that we're doing this in a church. Um, and uh, so you're going to be showing the movie tonight. What's mm -hmm. it, last question, what's it like when you show it in front of audiences? It's the best, I love it. Seeing people's <laughs> reactions to things yeah. that you think is funny. Or, yeah, yeah, they laugh, so, yeah. it's really cool. And it's also really special to do it in a church because the whole film is sort of kind of filmed in churches. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really yeah. cool. It's a fun venue to come to and we're gonna have a concert after. You're gonna play? Playing, yeah. All right, now do you ever improvise? In, not in, really. in, in a show like this? Or? No, no. I mean, I can do it, but not for Publix. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe that's your next film. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. It was Thanks a pleasure. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out Pipe Dreams. Uh, it's going to be on Documentary Channel. Uh, it's basically going to be touring the world uh, yeah. after it tours Canada. And uh, we're very lucky to have them on our show. So thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye.